Hello and welcome to the Book of Unwritten Tales 2, where we need to somehow figure out a way to get past the troll. He's still going to see us even though he can't hear us, so we'll have to think of something to do about that. Um... I can't see that we can do anything about that in there. Uh, was there anything that we could look at here? No. Um. Maybe we need to go into the lower town um can you guys help i'll let them have some time on their own they've got to make a decision about where they're going to spend their life together not an easy decision i don't want to confuse them with my disguise they'll end up thinking it's normal being spoken to in a friendly tone by strangers all right you've got your disguise on mm. Maybe we want to take that off. I'll let them have some time on their own. They've got... Hi, you two. Oh, hello. Uh... What about you guys? Hello, Zloth. Blout. Ah, oh, Princess Ivo. Home. Oh, yeah, the amulet. Right. Thanks for the chat. You were like a beacon of light in the darkness of night, Princess. As far as I know, you just need to throw a bit of this powder into the fireplace and then get in it. Yeah, but the thing is, you need to have the correct runes. Um... I wonder if... Wilbur? Yes? Right. I've got this joke about a patient and a doctor. Who would have thought? Tell me. After being examined, the patient asks, Doctor, can you help me? The doctor replies, Of course, I'm going to prescribe you a mud bath. And it'll help, asks the patient. Of course, the doctor says. It'll help you get used to the feeling of being buried. Is that a good joke? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Blout's told me a joke, but it's a bit... Mm, coarse. Perhaps a god of humour likes that sort of thing. Tell me. Okay. There are these two statues, and they've been standing in a park opposite each other for hundreds of years. A young man and a young woman, both naked. One day, a god appears and fulfills their greatest wish. They're allowed to leave their plinths for an hour. They immediately disappear into the bushes. There's rustling, whispering, giggling. Then the woman gasps, we've only got ten minutes left. And the young man replies, okay, let's switch positions. You get hold of the pigeon and I'll crap on it. <laughs> That's good. It's got gods and statues in it. Yeah, come to think of it, the God of Humor will probably appreciate it. I've never used fireplace travel powder before. How does it work? You have to throw it in a fire. And then you walk into the flames and concentrate hard on the symbols of the fireplace in which you want to come out. Aha, uh -huh. and those are? Um... 
Um, the icons on the fireplace in the library, you know. I've never been there. Have you not memorised them? Of course. They were... Owl, worm and rat, I think. You think? Uh, I'm pretty sure. Unless it was a lion, polar bear and caterpillar. Or at least it wasn't eagle, mole and penguin. Oh, uh, or was it? All right, I'll give it a go. That's all for now. See you later. Okay, so can we actually give those symbols a go then? Owl, worm and rat. Right then, bit of powder into the fire. Am I thinking of the right symbols? Yeah, I was pretty sure I remembered. Owl, worm and rat. Those appear to have been the right symbols. I think we've been discovered. Shh. Hello? I'm not going to harm you. Wilbur told me of this library. Wilbur? Is he well? He disappeared suddenly. He had to go underground. Supernatural forces now have the say in the school. Ah, we know that. We looked through a crack in the door and saw that terrible woman and her daughter. They didn't exactly look like intellectuals. <laughs> if the Van Burens discover this library, then you'll have to prepare yourself for a future of being coloured in with crayons. <laughs> Don't worry, we won't let it come to that. However, to prevent it, I have to get into the staff room. Then go. Courage stands at the beginning of a task and luck at the end. I've never been a big fan of hanging dead animals on the wall or laying them out on the floor. I'd much prefer them running around in a wood. Hmm. The workplace of a bookbinder, I think. I can practically still smell the troll snot. Ugh. <laughs> it's a good thing the library can disguise itself. Riots and revolutions are all too often accompanied by burning books. True. Uh, excuse me? How can we help you, oh friend of the friend of books? Do you know any good jokes? Uh, yeah! Do any of you books know any good jokes by any chance? Jokes? Well, uh, a few of us are funny, if that's what you mean, like comedies. Yeah, but those are too long. Any short ones? That's not something we can provide you with. How about a monologue? Um, I don't think that'll do. Can I cast a spell on a ghost? I don't know. Are you some kind of ghost whisperer? Um, no. So why ask me when you know you can't? No, can you tell me how to cast a spell on a ghost? Ah, well, that's completely different. <laughs> we have several good books on grammar here. Look, thank you, but I'm really just interested in casting a spell at the moment. I know all about that. Excellent. So how do I do it? To be precise, I need to trap or render the ghost incapable of movement. I think what you need is a magic circle. That's a symbol that you draw onto the ground. Ghosts are incapable of leaving this kind of circle, at least not for a while. Hmm, sounds good. Do these symbols get drawn with blood or salt or something of that sort? Actually, most people use chalk, but I'm sure you could use blood as well if that's what you're really into. It's not really important how the symbols get onto the ground. It's a square with a circle over it that has to have exactly the same surface area. And a right angle triangle must be placed into the circle. Sounds like something out of a mathematics book. Ha! Mathematics! 
This is about science, not some kind of hocus pocus. Oi! I heard that. <laughs> oh, um, do I have to memorize that? Uh oh. A circle and a square on top of each other with the same area. And then there was something about a triangle. Well, we'll come back here. I have to go. If we oh, need Charles, to. What's that wonderful saying? Better to be an ignorant traveller than to be wise and to sit at home. Wait a minute. She is travelling and we are sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Entrance hall. Hmm. What happens if we just go to the entrance hall? Nothing else here for us. Um. Right then, very carefully. <laughs> Hasn't noticed anything. Now, must be really quiet. According to Wilbur, the door's locked, and it'll only open when the headmaster says the code. Well... After you, headmaster. 469. 41. Have a good evening, headmaster, madam. All right. Let's look around. Ah! Well, my little one, have they been treating you well? I'll get you out of here. I just have to take care of something first. Mm. Very unlikely that a fire will be burning in that fireplace anytime soon. I wonder if all these transformations can be reversed when Wilbur finds a way of destroying the magic wand. Yeah, good question. What is this spot? It was like that when Wilbur was here as well, but there's nothing to interact with here. Nothing at all. I must admit, there was probably a time when I would have thought these sort of toys very exciting. But I was probably only 80 or 90 years old then. <laughs> Lucky the council leader hasn't noticed that I've cleared the entrance to the rat hole. She wouldn't appreciate the rats having access to her headquarters. Hmm. Hmm. The jar's been fastened to the cupboard with heavy and presumably magic chains. I wonder if... Aha! Archmage Alistair! Are you well? I can't understand you. Blink once for yes and twice for no. What does no blinks mean? Hang on, can frogs even blink? Uh, I think we'll need to sort this out later. I'm getting you out of here. Yay! Uh... Here we go. Lots of papers, feather quills. Hmm, this is interesting. A signet ring with the seal of the council leader. It's used to make laws and decrees official and identifiable. That means that until the council leader discovers it, I can pretty much pass any new law that I want. Cool. Right then, a new law. <laughs> uh, pregnant elves must be treated with the utmost respect. Would be nice. Um... Oh. By order of the council leader, with immediate effect, the wearing of magic protective amulets is forbidden. 
Well, I don't actually need a reason, just because. Whoever is caught with such an amulet will be punished with severe cuteness for at least six months. Right, with seal and everything. Right then, a new law. Uh, I mean, this would probably be funny, but I think we already did the thing that we need. By order of the council leader, with immediate effect, all pregnant elves must be treated with the greatest respect by everyone. In particular, it is forbidden to call them fat, to poke fun at them, or to try and kill them with an axe. Anyone breaking this law will be banished from the town. That makes it law. Uh, do I have to remember which is which or... Ban on magic amulets. Okay, cool. Um... Sure. Right then, a new law. May as well write the other ones as well. By order of the council leader, whosoever wishes to inhale the smoke of dried plants may do so for medical reasons. Furthermore, they are permitted to do so in order to write bad poetry or talk utter nonsense. That's for Arthur, should he ever come to town. <laughs> nice one. And then right the... Then. Uh, a new law. The final one. The love and marriage one. Two adult humans, dwarves, elves, or any other beings capable of rational thought are allowed to marry whomsoever they please, and in any combination. Only prerequisite, love. No one will be forced to marry a pompous ass just because he's a rich prince and mother thinks that I'm getting a bit long in the tooth. It's not the best phrased law of all time, but what the heck. All right, so I think that was all the laws. I'm still wondering about this spot here because there's nothing here. Hmm. I can't leave Buttercup behind. She may be a creation of the little Van Buren, but she's my pink-coloured love-hearty hippogriff girl. Ah! That's Wilbur's realm down there. I'm dealing with everything in the town. This division of labour's worked very well up to now. Yep, indeed it has. She can come with me as soon as I've finished here. She can wait in the town. She can come with me. Okay. I guess we're done here, right? That's just the <laughs> strange being. Um, leave the staff room. And there is indeed nothing I can do here, which is a bit weird. I don't think there's anything. Right. Well, let's go. Okay, Buttercup. You have to be really quiet now. <coughs> no, quiet. <coughs> <sighs> okay, let's go. They made it. I said quietly, Buttercup. <coughs> no, the troll was not your friend. He was trying to kill us. <coughs> no, I'm pretty sure that he didn't just want to play when he started hacking at us. <sighs> Be that as it may, Archmage Alistair is safe now. As soon as Wilbur has rescued Remy and knows how we can destroy the wand, we'll need to leave as quickly as possible. Morning's approaching, and in all probability, this will be the day that we see the return of a very, very frustrated council leader. Yeah. Oops. 
um, let's go talk to the ogres again. Do I have to place the laws in here? No, I need to just show them, right? Hang the law up. Do I need to do this? Like one at a time? Most people have fled town or hiding in their houses. Hardly anyone will see this law if I put it up here. I must be able to put it somewhere better. Somewhere better. Up here? No. I'm sorry to have to say this, but you are a criminal, Blout. Blout not criminal. Blout stands here like good little ogre and sells strange things. You're wearing an amulet, and that's against the law. What it say? By order of the Merchant Council leader, and with immediate effect, the wearing of magical protection is forbidden because... Well, I don't need any reason just because. Whoever is caught with such an item is to be punished with severe cutification for a minimum of six months. Huh? No! Blout don't want to be little girl with pigtails. Got to escape, love. Well, perhaps you can ask the friendly law enforcement officer to turn a blind eye. Who's I blind? What he means, Blout, is if you are really sorry about this and you can see you've made a mistake, then maybe the daughter of the council leader doesn't need to hear about it. Sorry, very sorry, very wrong. I will, however, need to confiscate the amulet so that you won't be tempted to wear it in secret. Hey. Confiscate. Take away. Oh, sure. You don't tell little girl, right? <laughs> Blout want to stay. Blout. I'll keep it for myself. Okay. Let's go talk to Wilbur again. Hey, do we give the... No. Okay. Um... Wilbur? Yes? I've got an amulet for you. It shows the magic circle symbol. Is it magic? Not in the slightest. But it shows the symbol you have to draw on the ground underneath the ghost to trap him. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. Thanks. I've saved Archmage Alistair. Or the frog that we think is Archmage Alistair. Kraken, is he all right? Yeah, he's okay. Got a few bumps and bruises. But it wasn't because I dropped him a couple of times fighting the troll together with a hippogriff or anything like that. Hi, Bo. <laughs> hmm? Did you just say you rolled a hippogriff into battle against a troll? The Archmage is safe, okay? That's all for now. See you later. Okay, I guess I really have to remember the magic circle stuff. Well, we can at least make a little bit of progress. The basket will let Ivor and I exchange stuff. Very Okay, so I I guess you've got the amulet. Yeah, you do. Um Right. Well, let's try the new jokes.
in here. I do think the uh, God of Humor will appreciate Blout's joke. It does have gods and statues and uh, it's um... Well, God of Humor was this guy. Yoo -hoo. Oh, young friend, would you like to hear a joke? I have a joke. Hit me. This is a joke about a doctor and his patient. I think it's the only one of its kind. After being examined, the patient asks, Doctor, can you help me? The doctor replies, of course. I'm going to prescribe you a mud bath. And it'll help, asks the patient. Of course, the doctor says. It'll help you get used to the feeling of being buried. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> that was even worse than the first one. Come on, that was good. Oh, sure. What does the god of humor know about jokes? <laughs> Did you see me laughing? No. Well, I think he'll appreciate this one. I know a joke with statues and gods. I'm sure you like it. Oh, that sounds good. For hundreds of years, these two statues were in a park opposite each other. One is a young man, the other a young woman. Both are naked. So one day a god appears and grants them their greatest wish. They are permitted to leave their respective plinths for an hour. Both immediately disappear into the undergrowth. There's rustling, whispers, giggles. We've still got ten minutes, the young man gasps. And she replies, great, let's switch places. You hold the pigeon and I'll crap on it. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't even bring a tired smile to the faces of your audience. But... Well, to an audience with a sense of humor. There's only one of them here, and he didn't laugh. Ah. Well, I thought my jokes were good, and the others laughed. Oh, that's irrelevant. I have to laugh. But you only seem to laugh at your own jokes. Because they're the best ones. But that's... Wait a minute. <laughs> Two cannibals are eating a clown. <laughs> and what does one say to the other? He tastes a bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> he tastes a bit funny. <laughs> oh, he tastes a bit... Oh, because he's a clown. <laughs> oh, that was a good joke, my friend. You made me laugh. Oh, so now I'll aid you, mortal. <laughs> Unless I counted wrong, I've now done three of you a favor. So, how do I cross the water? Walk. Ha ha. You might be able to walk on water, but I can't. And what about... Ice. Ice? Haven't you noticed how cold it is here? That doesn't look like ice. So? And you couldn't have just told me that. <laughs> Would it have been as satisfying that way? Probably not. But you'd better hope nothing happened to Remy just because you delayed me. Okay. Remy must have figured out that the lake was frozen on his first expedition. He probably went straight to the temple. Hmm. It looks like water, but... It's actually ice. Child's play. Ah, whoa, ah, whoa. No or problem not. at all. Remy! No, Wilbur. It's a trap. Whoa. You! You will bring me the wand that this thief stole years ago. you or what are you I am the gatekeeper 
You! You're the ghost of one of those mages that wanted to free the Nameless One, right? The Nameless One must never be allowed to enter this world. No? I mean, you're so right. Neither I nor Remy want that, so why are you fighting us? He stole the wand. The wand is the key. Bring me the key! Let Remy go free. He's badly injured. He will die if you don't bring me the magic wand. I don't have the magic wand anymore. Then retrieve it. Your friend doesn't have much time. Oh! Ah! We don't have that much time. We have to... Your friend is growing weaker by the second. Bring me the wand, or he will die. But we can't! Ah! All right, all right! I'll think of something, Remy. I know you will, Wilbur. I have to get Remy out of there as quickly as possible. He seemed so weak. Maybe... Maybe I can somehow sneak past the ghost, or... Um... There is that magic circle thing. Once I draw the symbol on the ground under the ghost, he'll be spellbound. Only, how can I do it? Yeah, we don't exactly have anything to draw with. A small mirror made out of some strange material. It's really smooth, like wood, but it feels different. This is Remy's shrinking ring. It's pretty powerful. It can shrink a fully grown gnome to rat size. We need something we can draw with. Do we need to talk to, um... I was in the temple and there's a terrifying ghost. That's great. That gives it a little pep. A little pep? My friend is dying. And you have only a short amount of time to save him. This is exciting, isn't it? This is all just a game to you, isn't it? But rats are dying here. If something happens to Remy because you wouldn't help me, then... Ah! Bugger this for a box of frogs. I don't have time to waste on you gods. I've problems to solve. What's the matter with him? I've had enough of gods. I have to take care of Remy. Let's see if we can find something to draw with. Timmy? Yeah? I've, well, I, um, I'm still looking for your uncle. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll find him soon. Yeah, yeah, sure. If he knew his uncle was caught in a trap and badly injured, he'd be sick with worry. Or worse, he could march straight to the temple himself. I've got to get back. You can do it. Hmm. What do we draw with, though? There wasn't anything here. <gasps> Were there crayons in the... I think I'll let Ivo do the work up there. She can go places I can't. She can even reach things higher than a meter and a half. I'll look after everything down here in the underground. Okay, then. Hi, Ethel. Oh, oh! You always have this habit of creeping up on me. I found Remy. He's... he's injured. Oh! Do you have anything like a healing potion? Uh, oh, I'll prepare one at once. Will take a while if it's to be a strong one. Okay. Please do your best. 
And do you by any chance know anything about ghosts? Oh, superstitious nonsense. That isn't quite true. There's one down there. Oh, temperature changes, fog, drafts, no ghosts. Look, there's a ghost down there and it's taken Remy prisoner. Hallucination, suggestion, not real. Get Remy here, quick! If you say so. You look after the healing potion then. I'll deal with the hallucination. I'll see what I can do for Remy. Yes, quick, quick! Okay, well, I guess we can't get any help from here. You know, um, finding a drawing instrument. Hmm? Ivo? What? I found Remy in the temple. He's caught in a trap. Is he okay? I couldn't get through. A terrifying ghost is guarding him. And he really doesn't look good, Ivo. We have to get him up here. Then I can take a look at his wounds. But we have to get past the ghost. I have to get going. Don't get caught. Good luck. Keep your ears stiff. And I'm pretty sure there wasn't anything up there that we could grab or or something. Well, I mean, maybe let's just go there and try to use the amulet on the ghost. See if that works. Because it doesn't look like there's anything we can grab anywhere down here and or anywhere up there and Wilbur doesn't want to go up there to maybe like go find a crayon or something to draw the symbol with. I'll sneak back over to the island. Now I know what awaits me there. Maybe I can find a place to hide while I suss out the situation. Or maybe I can even go to get Remy without being noticed. Okay. Is there something to draw with here? That's probably the strange machine that cultists wanted to use for things. Doesn't look like it's been used recently. The ghost called the wand the key. I wonder if this machine is the lock. Hmm. No idea how far down it goes. The cellar master spoke of caves and crevices reaching hundreds, sometimes thousands of meters down into the ground. Hmm. I think this was once a mirror, just like the one over there. I'm not sure. Maybe the cultists required either sun or moonlight for certain rituals and used the mirrors to reflect it down here. This mirror's broken. No trace of the shards. Do we... The hand mirror is, of course, much smaller than the mirror that was in there before, but it should be enough for a small beam of light. Aha. Uh -huh. Indeed we do. Oh, Remy, if I'd have gone with you, this never would have happened. Or if it had, I could have got help. Hmm. The beam of moonlight really emphasizes just how dark it is down here. What a dreadful creature. The ghost lured Remy into a trap, and now it's using me to get the magic wand. The light doesn't seem to bother him. He hasn't moved from the spot. The mirrors project the light on precisely the spot above which the ghost hovers. That could be useful. I won't move it. Oh? Do we need to somehow use shadows to 
There's no negotiating with a ghost. It wants the wand and is willing to let Remy die for it. I can't let that happen. So, do we somehow need to use shadows to, um... ...to make the symbol? Because we certainly don't have anything to draw with. Do we... Yeah. Hmm, if I put the medallion on the mirror, then the shadow might... <sighs> it works! Yes! The ghost can't leave the magic circle. I have to get to Remy, quick. Oh, okay. So I didn't have to remember the magic circle thing after all. Remy! Good idea! Using the magic circle, Wilbur. But it won't hold him off for long. Okay, but we've got to get out of here quick. No. No? It's too late, Wilbur. The trap is probably the only thing holding me together. Oh. Um... It's not too late. A good healing potion or a powerful healing spell and you're back on your feet. I don't have much time. Let's not waste it with impossible dreaming. I've only just found out what is going on with the wand. What about the wand? There were two brothers, powerful sorcerers. They amassed much wealth and power with the help of dark knowledge. They searched and found this temple. One of them went insane and left town. The other was killed by my grandfather. Ah! Oh. Remy! Shortly before the brother's death, he transferred all of his power to a wand. And that power would only be unleashed if a blood descendant held the wand in their hands. A blood descendant. So the girl is a blood descendant of this mage. And one of the creators still guards his machine as a ghost. No. My grandfather must have encountered the sorcerer by coincidence. He realized what the sorcerer's plan was and defeated him. He gave his life and never left the temple again. You mean... He guards the wand. Didn't want it to find its way into the hands of the descendant of the sorcerer. This place is evil, Wilbur. It changes people. The wall between our world and the dungeon dimension is particularly thin here. The influence of the Nameless One is strong. I think my grandfather has forgotten who he was. He only exists to protect the wand. You found the wand and gave it to me, but I don't understand. Wilbur, in everyday life, the sorcerers were merchants. Their surname was Van Buren. Sybil married Montgomery Van Buren, the sorcerer's youngest son. Her daughter, Chantal, has a Van Buren blood flowing through her veins. The first time the wand acted strangely was in the classroom. It must have sent Chantal. And when Chantal got her hands on it, she received all her grandfather's secret powers, but not his knowledge. How can we destroy the wand? It's explained in the... The second brother's book of spells, he... Uh, uh, he spent his final years mentally deranged in the dark woods. And the one brother came up with a way to break the other's power if it ever became necessary. Yes. Uh, you must find the book and destroy the wand, Wilbur. Yeah! Go now, my friend. Remy! The Resistance needs a leader, and I know of no greater fighter for good than you.
Give this to Timmy. Please, look after him. What? What happened? Where's Uncle Remy? I'm so sorry. No, but... You said you'd bring him back. I tried. Um, all set to go. They're waiting down by the gate. Mm, all, all right. And Timmy? Esther and Nate are taking care of him. OK. Uh, you really are quite sure? Yes. Remy said the key to the one's destruction lies in the dark woods. And his death shall not be in vain. No, it shan't be. I just don't know if we should split up. We're a good team together. <laughs> um, she's not going to like this one. You look after the Archmage, I'll search for the book. Van Buren can't chase us both. You're right. She'll be beside herself when she notices that the Archmage is gone. Any idea how to bring him back? Not the slightest, but I know how to find out. How? An oracle told me. I'll have to help a friend and will not know what to do. I must then find a flying pirate island, and on it, a building without corners. Oh. Then that's your path. Come on, Gulliver. Let's go see what Timmy's up to. Yep. Good luck. Look after yourself. And we should put as much distance between us and Seastone before the old witch realises what's happened. Come on then, Buttercup. We're trying to find a flying pirate island. That's where we'll find the answers. Too many questions. That's probably where we'll find Nate, Chief, too. here you are at last. We're looking for a flying island. Try to keep up this time. Ah, oh, poor Jeep Jeep. It's quite fascinating how you can get other people to work for you. If you know the right buttons to press. Your services are no longer needed. You're going to bring the nameless one back to this world! Nonsense. Only an idiot or a lunatic would try something like that. And I am neither. <laughs> so where's the real Remy then? Hmm, interesting. It was a long flight, and it looks like I'm getting heavier and heavier to boot. Have a rest, but stay close by. The Oracle said that it was to be found in a building without corners on a flying island. And Tugator's the only flying island that I know. Let's hope we find a few answers here. A building without corners. Well, we can look for that in the next episode. For now, thank you so much for watching and spending a little of your time with me here today. If you like this video, please leave it a like, I would really love that. And also, please remember to be kind to yourself, have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you again next time.